So today we will be completing the fish dissection. As you may recall, the goal of this dissection is going to be to compare the structures of a single-celled organism to the structures of a multi-celled organism. So while I may be walking you through the dissection itself, it's up to you to make the connections between the organelles of a cell and the organs of a multicellular organism, and in this case, a fish. So by now you are familiar with the structures found inside a single cell. What you see in front of you are the internal structures of a multicelled organism. As we proceed with our dissection of the perch, please refer to this diagram as a reference. The first thing that we will be doing is measuring the length and width of the fish. You may use any size ruler, but a foot long ruler will likely be the best choice. Be sure to make all measurements in millimeters. So when you're measuring the length of the fish, measure from the head all the way down to the end of the tail. You should be right at the end of the fins if you're measuring correctly. Now in measuring the width of the fish, measure from the bottom of the fish up to the top. Use that poker to help line up the ruler so you know you're getting the entire width of the fish. Next, we're going to go ahead and locate the scales of the fish. They're easy to find because the scales cover almost the entire body. You're going to want to draw one whole section of scales and record a description in as much detail as possible. Once you've recorded a picture of the scales, you can then break the thin film of tissue. If you use your tweezers, you can carefully remove a single scale from the fish. They actually come off pretty easily. Once you've removed a scale, set it aside and use your ruler to find the length and width of it. Next, we are going to identify each of the fish's fins. So, the first fin is the easiest to spot. It's called the caudal fin, and we've since been referring to it as the tail fin. It's found on the opposite end of the head. After you've located the tail fin, you can find the soft dorsal fin. Next, we have the anal fin. Two pelvic fins are found on both sides of the fish. Going back up top, we have the spinous dorsal fin. It's sharp, so be careful. And lastly are the two pectoral fins, which again are found on either side of the fish. So now that you've located each fin, you can proceed to measure them. Measure the length of each fin, not the width. So once you've finished measuring the length of all the different fins on the fish, you're going to want to use your scissors to remove a small piece of the spinous dorsal fin. The piece should be thin and you should have a small piece of the membrane in between two of the spines. This way you can take the piece, put it under the microscope and observe it a bit closer. Alright, so the next thing you're doing is opening up the gill flaps and counting the number of lobes inside the gills. You may need to crack the gill, gill flap a little bit because it won't be as easy to open until you hear a small crack. But once you do, you should be able to use your pick to separate the individual lobes and count the number within. Uh, it should be the same number on both sides, but feel free to check both to make sure. So the next thing you need to do is open up the jaw. You might need to crack the lower jaw to get it to open up a little bit more, but once you do, you can take your ruler and measure the length of the lower jaw. Finally, use your pick to locate the anus. It should be at the proximal end 
of the anal fin. So in this second part of the dissection, we'll be opening the fish up to explore its internal features. Recall that our primary goal in this dissection is to compare the multi-celled structures of this perch to the structures found in a single cell. You'll be comparing and contrasting the function of the organs and organelles and making connections about how they help the organism meet the needs of life. So as you can see in this video, I'm beginning by using my scalpel to make an incision along the ventral portion of the, or the underside of the fish. So you want to make the cut from just behind the pectoral fin all the way to the anal fin. Once you've done that, run the scalpel through a few times to be sure that all the layers of tissue are severed. As I open up the first incision, I can see immediately that I have an egg-bearing female. The eggs are filling up the inside of the fish. If your fish has a similar material, you want to remove as much of it as possible throughout the dissection. Next, you will make two vertical cuts from the ventral side of the fish to the dorsal side of the fish, or otherwise bottom to top. One cut should be along the pectoral fin, and the other cut should move vertically from the anal fin up to the dorsal side. When making both cuts, be sure that they are clean cuts, and especially be sure that not to cut too deeply, otherwise you may damage the internal structures of the fish. Again, if your fish has eggs, clean them as necessary. With these three cuts, you should have a flap that's easily openable and should create a window into the internal structures of the fish. Keep cutting until the flap is easily openable. You should be able to lift it up with that much effort and put it back. Check to be sure that you can do this. The first structure you will find is a solid piece of muscle tissue. Remove this or cut it out using the scalpel and set it aside. We will be using it later. You will now see me using the scalpel to remove eggs and clean up the area for careful removal of the internal organs. Remember, this is only necessary if you yourself find eggs in the fish you're dissecting. Next you will attempt to locate the intestines. They should be in the upper portion of the fish. They are long tube-like structures. Carefully remove them with the tweezers and sever any connections at the stomach and the anus. You may also want to remove the stomach at this point as well because it's a lot easier to find the stomach when you find it attached to the intestines. At this point, you should stretch out the intestines and use a ruler to measure its length. Again, be sure to be measuring in millimeters. If you haven't already done so, remove the stomach. It is a small loose sac. It kind of looks something like a torn balloon. It's probably a lot smaller than you would imagine. You may find yourself with a large piece of connective tissue. Use your tweezers to remove it. Don't discard it because the spleen of the fish may be attached. If you see a small black structure, that's likely the spleen and you're definitely going to want to save that. If you look towards the superior side of the fish, you should find a large lobed structure. This is the liver. Remove it and set it aside. Next, with some careful cutting, you should be able to remove the heart of the fish along with the related circulatory structures. Why don't we take a second look at that piece of connective tissue we found earlier. You're going to notice that it actually contains two separate organs. One of the organs is called the swim bladder, and this is a structure that helps the fish uh, rise and sink while swimming. The second structure, as mentioned before, is the spleen, and that is the small black structure connected to the larger connective tissue. The next structure that's easily removable is called the olfactory bulb. 
This is a structure that helps the fish see when it's in the water. So if you go towards the eyeball on either side of the fish and use your scalpel to dig into it, you should be able to take out a clear plastic sphere. And this is the olfactory bulb. This is the actual organ that helps the fish see. So now during this dissection, you've removed the following structures. The spleen, the swim bladder, the olfactory bulb, the heart and circulatory structures, the liver, and the intestines. So that more or less concludes our fish dissection. You have observed both internal and external structures. So now you're going to use this data you've collected to create an in-depth comparison of microscopic structures found within a single cell to larger organs found within a multi-celled organism. All that's left to do is clean up. As you can see in this video, I'm taking as much debris as I can and putting it inside a plastic bag. I'll seal the plastic bag and wash off the dissection tray. Throw out the plastic bag and then clean up your work area thoroughly and completely. I hope you have enjoyed the dissection of the fish. I'm looking forward to reading your analyses.